Yeah, no. I don't know if any of you know the story, but Alan started this whole thing off because uh, his son Declan was part of a, a rock program and uh, the people that were running that uh, moved overseas and just let the thing go. So Alan said to Declan, maybe I should do something like that. And Declan was like, <coughs> Ziff. And then about sort of four or five months later, Declan said, oh, Dad, do you remember when you had that idea about, the, you know, doing like a, a rock academy thing? Well, maybe you should do it. And Alan was like, right. So he got on the blow to me and we got it, got it started. So that was... This is now Rock Academy 4, so that was early last year, wasn't it? And uh, it really is going from strength to strength. Um, I'll, I'll get uh, my fellow mentor up here, Mr. Finbar O'Hanlon. Ladies and gentlemen, Finbar O'Hanlon. <laughs> Finbar has been living in the States uh, for the last, how long? About seven years. About seven years. He's originally from Sydney, moved to Melbourne. Um, and I don't know if you can sort of pick up just by his aesthetic and the way he looks. He's a man of the rock. <laughs> now, on, on my way here, I was thinking, uh, it's called Rock Academy, but it's really not just restricted to uh, the style of rock music. We consider rock as a kind of an attitude, a sort of a, a way of life. It's really, uh, whether you're into soul, R&B, punk, screamo, pop, it doesn't matter. Rock really is more the attitude that you take when you, when you commit yourself to playing music. You can even apply it to, to life, you know. I, I went on this amazing trip and it rocked, and it didn't rock because of uh, what I got from it. it it's rock, it rocked because of what I put into it to take back the memories and the experience. And that's what we're all about at Rock Academy. It's almost like the music is kind of secondary to all the other things, the pre preparation to playing live. Um, the it's the intuition between the players, it's the performances, working with each other. And these are skills that often individual music teachers don't teach you. It's this, it's this coming together of the different styles and the different attitudes and putting it under one umbrella and then just seeing that melting pot evolve. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see like a music curriculum at a college that actually has the bit in it where it says introduce yourself to the sound person because they're going to be mixing you out the front and if they don't like you they can make you sound like shit out the front right so it's little tips like that uh, bring a guitar stand you know you think oh yeah no i'll just put my guitar on the floor you know but if you're first starting out you've only got one guitar and you break the neck on that guitar then you don't have a gig Right, so it's little things like that. And so it's also one of the one of the key things that I've learned is uh, from working with artists from all over the world in all different levels is the ability to interact and, and take the ego away. And you know, when you're working and collaborating like that, it, it's it's about the collaborative effect, not just this is me. And this is me can get people far, but the collaboration is where you start to explore and find new things, and it gets really exciting. Yeah, we no. that's what we encourage. Yeah, totally. Like the setup we've got here tonight, there's a couple of people that are using other people's amps, and you actually have to go up to that other person and say, oh, hey man, is it cool if I use your amp, right? <laughs> and you'd think that would be an easy thing to do, but for some people they can learn how to play a million notes an hour, but the ability to actually go up to another person and say, hey man, can I use your amp? Yeah. It's like the hardest thing. Like, go over and tell them, go over and ask them. And they go up and do it, and then get a show so we're all about the show and that's what I think separates us from other programs is all through the week these guys have been working their asses off oh sorry I, I know there's kids but we're in what what happens at the central club stays at the central club okay so we're, we're in a world of rock here so there might be a few little s-bombs slipping out here and there but what I was saying was that these guys have worked their um, butts off all week for tonight to put on a show right it was about and the two uh, projects they had were, one was to work up a cover song, and by cover I mean their interpretation of a really well-known song that they all love, to performance level, right? Not just to sit there and play it like they're in their bedrooms, but actually perform the song, right? And then the second one was to write a song as a little ensemble together, little different groups, again, to write an original song and to rehearse and work that up to performance level. So that's what you're going to see tonight. Uh, pretty rushed, and I was well, I was telling them um, they wrote 
they all, all the different groups wrote their songs in one day. We would usually take six weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then get with five different guys. And pretend and, we did it in one day. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know when they say, oh yeah man, we, we wrote that song in one day, it's just PR. Trust me, it took them a lifetime of music and experience and stuff. They might have got the idea down in one day. But these guys actually, we did a really great workshop on how to write songs or an approach to writing songs. And, the, and what came out was just amazing as it always is. And uh, you will see that tonight. So listen, um, we sometimes have like an order. We do have a, a program tonight and, and the, the different bands are on there. But I think tonight we might do, just do something a little bit different. We might just kind of pick at random uh, the, the different, um, throw them in the deep end and pretend we're at Woodstock 1969 and uh, the Grateful Dead's helicopter's stuck in um, uh, some turbulence. So we're going to have to get Richie Van Halen, uh, not Richie Van Halen, Richie, Richie Halen's up to kind of fill, out, fill in for Santana before they get here. So um, I think first cab off the rank, and what would be good, actually, Marnie, is while they're setting up, we have a little bit of sort of play on music. So that's just that. Um, there we go, yeah. That's cool. So uh, I think first up we'll get um, Zed Leplin.